Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we're taking a look at an interesting part, something I've never looked inside of either. It's called an electronic expansion valve. It's part of a refrigerant system. In a refrigerant system, we have a high pressure side and a low pressure side, and there will be a point of restriction in between the high and low pressure. Some systems use a cap tube, some systems use a thermostatic expansion valve, and some systems now use an electronic expansion valve. And what this does is it allows a computer or microprocessor controller to step a plunger up and down in very controlled increments and change the amount of flow through this valve. So that controller, that electronic controller, has much more flexibility than just a regular solenoid on and off. It can move this plunger in several thousand steps in very, very small increments. So that distance between full closed and full open can have any one of several thousand positions. So it gives it very fine control over how much flow goes through the system. If we take a look at the outside of this valve, you can see it is used. It has been installed in a system. It has some very limited details on it as to what it is, but it does show the normal flow of refrigerant through the system. It's also pretty well sealed up, so it will be interesting to try and get this open, but there's not a lot of other details. The electrical connector is just a simple four pin with a threaded connection to make sure it stays attached. So let's go ahead and try and open it up here. I'm thinking what I'll do is try and run a pipe cutter around the outside. So that didn't go as smoothly as I'd hoped, but here we are. So we're cut apart now and you can see right away there's a small ribbon cable where we feed our data from our outside of the connector into the inside of the, I guess, step motor down in there. But now that we're apart, let's take a look at how they had put this together. So it looks like they had pressed this down in and then rolled this edge over. Uh, putting a pipe cutter to it deformed it a lot, but you can see there is an o-ring seal down in there So this could potentially become a leak path if that o-ring were to get hard or cracked for whatever reason Like say you sweated it in got it too hot when you sweated the new valve in so now that that's a part Let's take a look down inside here And I believe what we're looking at is the step motor itself but then there's also some little tangs down in there. So there's probably a special socket they use to get this assembled. Getting it apart may be tough. Well, let's see if I can get it out. Well, I had to go after it with a hacksaw and cut the ring off. Looks like I deformed it too much with the pipe cutter. So probably should have just done that from the get-go. But now I think we can get this out. So there you can see the little pintle that actually goes down into the orifice. And that's our orifice way down inside there, that little small dot. So in our system, the transition from high pressure to low pressure happens at that orifice down inside there. That little tiny dot down in there and this little pintle opens and closes. It rides inside that. Now this assembly is all sealed up too, but I'm, I'm going to go a little further with it. But you can see right off we've got a, a movable shaft here with the little pintle pin in the end of it. And then we've got a motor drive here. And the way this is put together makes me think it's a little reduction gearbox. You can see here they've, they've folded over all the little tabs to hold this gearbox together. I don't know if I'll be able to, but let's try, let's try just folding these back, see if we can get it that way. 
I think I got it pretty close here. Let's see. I tried to pry back the, the retaining tabs and not destroy this. Yeah, we're going to get it. We're going to get it here. So yeah, it is a gearbox, and you can see the little clockwork mechanism here. So I'm sure what's happening here is the motor needs a lot of force to drive that pintle closed against the high pressure side of the system. So they amplify that force through this gear reduction system. And that also gives you more precision. If you move this motor just a little bit, you know, one fraction of a turn, by the time you get through the clockwork, that's just a, a barely tiny perceptible motion of this. It's really not designed to be serviced. It's very much a replace, replaceable part, not a serviceable part. There'd be no good way to get this thing back together after what we had to do to get it apart. So this little tiny motor, it's hard for, for you to see, so I'm going to try and demonstrate it here as best I can, but you can feel the, the magnet here. It's got steps and it kind of locks to a step. If I bump it just a little bit, it kind of rotates itself to a step. So when you turn it, you can feel the little steps as it turns. It, it's pretty consistent with a brushless DC motor. I'm not entirely sure if that's what it is, but that's what it feels like just from the way it turns. But I don't see any markings that I can really really make out here. There's a, a manufacturer mark, but there's no details on voltage or amperage or anything. It does look like it's been welded, which just by itself is an interesting manufacturing thing. It looks like they did some some welding along the outside of the motor casing there. Very, very fine precision manufacturing. Neat little, co neat little assembly, neat little component. So now let's take a look at the mechanism for this, this pintle here. So we got one of our clockwork gears. And I don't know if we'll be able to drive this out or if we'll have to smash the assembly here. But as I'm, as I'm turning this, you can see that pintle retract and advance. Let's just see if we can advance it all the way out if it falls out. Yeah, there it goes. So yeah, this, this whole mechanism is just a little screw and a threaded plastic piece in this brass guide. And then the gear down inside just drives that screw. And then you can see the little pintle here is just threaded into a brass insert that's molded into this threaded extension, I guess. Pretty neat little setup. Neat system. So let's take a look at what principles we're using here. We've got an electric motor. We're driving through a series of gear reductions into a screw, a threaded shaft. And then we're using the, the orifice with a little pintle here to restrict flow, create that difference in pressure between our high and our low side. Mechanically, it's really simple, right? basic principles. But uh, the little motor and the feedback mechanism in the motor here is probably much more advanced than you can see just from the outside. It's a very precisely assembled component. When we talk about how would it fail, the, the first and most obvious one would be to get some kind of debris down into that orifice. And if that orifice were to become clogged with some kind of small solder blob or wax, any debris that was able to make it down in there, it would become trapped down inside and restrict that flow so the valve could come all the way open and we still wouldn't get any flow. The next one that I, I would see on a failure point would be the the little pintle here wearing out or some part of the gear train or motor 
wearing out. So we could see a mechanical failure there where something just gets jammed, especially if the system's had a, a failure and there's acidic uh, oil floating around or we've got wax floating around. You could, you could see a situation where this would become mechanically bound. And the last big one would be just in this little precision motor itself. The, the motor itself here has a lot going on with it in terms of the way it's assembled and it, the way it's being uh, monitored and controlled. So you could see a situation where the, the fine ribbon here is damaged or the connectors are damaged or the motor itself fails. And then the last one, and probably the, the easiest to cause, would be overheating the valve during installation. Now at the manufacturer end, they're very cautious about how they put these together. But if you were to replace one of these in service and not control heat into this part of the assembly, you could very easily melt or damage the little pintle assembly here, the motor, or even the O-ring seal in the cap. And at that point, there, there'd be no way to service it. It would, be a it would be a replacement. So I think that'll do it for this one. It's a pretty interesting part. Uh, this one came in from John over at Remco, so I appreciate that. Thank you, John, for donating this for a teardown. And I'll see you on the next one. Hi, folks. My name is Jack Kell, and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com. Dot com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.